What's up guys, it's RoboFreak here, and I'm going to show you uh, a robot that I made very recently. Right here I've got a Vex tank tread chassis. It's constructed of two uh, 24, I believe these are the like the 16 inch uh, plates. Two of these, they're connected by the long standoff beams. In the back there's two standard motors. The VEX camera, the VEX sensor, the light sensor, and the VEX ultrasonic sensor. Those are the only VEX parts. Now, the non VEX parts include a SparkFun Blue Smurf RPM SA, or the RP SMA. It's the one with the antenna, not the uh, ceramic antenna. It, there's also the Arduino Decimella board with a SparkFun. Uh, Proto Shield on it. I like the Proto Shield a lot. Just as you can see, there's a lot of stuff connected to it. It saves having to use a second breadboard, so it's well worth the fifteen dollars. The Arduino is powered by its own separate four point eight volt battery pack right here, as well as the camera. They're the same battery packs. The camera one is right here on the side. It runs down the length. They're slim battery packs off onlybatterypacks.com, and I was able to get five for, I believe, 25 or $26, so it was a pretty good deal. And uh, up here, I have a 12-volt battery pack. With, it's basically your standard 8AA 12-volt uh, long rectangular battery pack. You can pick them up at Radio Shack. Or a couple dollars but um, this drives the motors and only the motors it doesn't basically the motors run off these battery packs the micro con or this battery pack this uh, the microcontroller runs completely separate from that as you can see with the two batteries up there now the power runs from the battery pack to two Y cables and it's connected the battery pack is connected to two of the female um, connectors on the uh, Y cable. On the there's two Y cables, and on each of them, one female connector is connected to the battery pack. The male connector is connected to the Arduino, and it's then grounded and connected to the pulse with modulation pins nine and ten on the Arduino. And then the second female connector on both Y cables is then connected to the motor which basically allows them to be powered by their own separate power supply, the um, AA battery packs, and still be able to be driven by the microcontrollers pulse width modulation. So it's just a little hack I made to uh, make, makes it a lot easier. So let's give this thing a test drive. Now I get to show you the software part that I've constructed for this. Here I have. Okay, I gotta log in. Computer went into standby. Okay. This is my program that I wrote here. It is written in Visual Studio 2008 in BASIC. Um, the connection over Bluetooth is managed by Blue Salil, and it takes the connection from the. Um, the blue smurf which is named Firefly and ports it to a serial port that programs can use as if it was a real serial port as like a hardware I do have I believe uh, on my other computer I have one hardware serial port and it shows up as like COM3 or COM2 and what this does is it just emulates the Bluetooth connection and ports it to the serial port. So it'd be as almost a, it'd be like if there was a wire connected to the computer, you could send data to it and connect it to the Arduino almost pretty much like USB. But it would actually go to the program, then it would get sent over the Bluetooth link to the robot. And you don't have to worry about actually dealing with the Bluetooth stuff. The program does that all for you. But within my program, I have 
directions tells you to use the W, S, D, and A keys for direction control. Uh, the right here, your basic first person shooter keys. There's a collision alert checkbox, which I do have checked. There is the ultrasonic sensor data text box and the light sensor data text box. The ultrasonic sensor data displays the um, distance between the robot and any object in inches. And the light sensor data displays um, the light intensity between 0 and 1024. The lower, the brighter, and the higher the number, the darker it is. So, let me show you here. Um, basically, you use the keys, just like you were in a first-person shooter, and you drive the robot. Pretty simple. Uh, now I'm going to show you the alert part of it. Back it up. I'm going to go toward that wall right there. As you can see, it's at 15 inches from the wall now. I'm going to go forward. It's now at 11. If I go any closer, the alarm will sound. Oh. And that's basically to alert you if you are within 10 inches of an object but it's kind of annoying so if I really wanted to make it so that it would detect if you were about to fall off stairs or something that's a lot more useful than if you're gonna hit a wall because I can drive this thing into I can drive this thing into a wall and just back it off it's not gonna have a problem but if it runs off some stairs it'll probably break a lot of stuff so I wish I had done the uh, stair detection, but that was a little bit more complicated. I wasn't going to uh, spend the time to do that right now. I know I had uh, promised you guys that it would be Wii Remote controlled, but I didn't really feel like putting that in. It's quite simple to implement it. It's not a really big deal. I have all the code that I need and I know how to do it. It would probably take me an hour or two. But I could get it to be controlled from a Wii Remote and possibly drive it by tilting the Wii Remote. I'm not quite sure exactly how that works. But um, I think the user interface and the keyboard is a lot more um, friendly than using the Wii Remote because that way you can be your computer. There's other stuff I do want to put on this. The one thing that this robot lacks is complete speed control over the motors, which I'm working on, but uh, so far I haven't been able to send a value from the computer to the Arduino, but if uh, anybody knows how to do that, please feel free to comment. Uh, I'd be really interested to know. I've asked many times in the forums, and so far nobody's been able to help me. But uh, that's pretty much it. And... Uh, There'll be more videos to come of these type of robots. So yeah.